Welcome to this vodcast on wave characteristics, part of the IBDP physics syllabus. Today we're going to be looking at wave fronts and rays. Uh, that's part of wave fronts, rays, and graphs, but I'm splitting it in 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 two in order to make the each vodcast a little bit shorter. So these are the understandings and skills taken from the IB physics guide. There are no data booklet equations. Uh, specific to this particular subsection, although c equals f lambda is certainly there in the background. Now, the idea of a wave front, the idea of a ray, is that they are a way of graphically describing, and therefore maybe predicting, the behaviour of a wave. The essential idea, or one of the essential ideas of this unit, is that everything that you can use to describe one type of wave, be it transverse, longitudinal, be it water waves, light waves, etc., can also be applied mathematically, graphically, to other types of waves. And so, although we'll use water waves as a main example here, we'll also discuss other types of waves, and you should be able to remember, you should remember, that everything can be applicable across different types of wave and waveforms. So let's take a situation like the one in the photograph here, which is you have a disturbance, falling water or whatever, creating ripples, in a uh, water on the surface of the water so you have a two-dimensional wave effectively on the surface of the water and what you're actually seeing here in this photograph in this frozen moment in time is these circular patterns and these are crests of the wave so these are points where the wave has been pushed upwards and between it there will be um, troughs and we can represent that as a cross section on this particular chart we have the crests we have the troughs this is like a slice through the wave and you have a wavelength between the two crests although it could be between two troughs etc you have the equilibrium position and the distance between the crest and the trough is the height of the wave but let's use the terms we should be using so instead of wave height we'll say the amplitude of wave given the symbol a or x subscript zero and the wavelength has the symbol lambda. So going back to our picture of a, a circular wave here or a radial wave, you have the uh, the oscillation in the middle that's creating the wave, and then you have the wave spreading out. And as I say, this is a, a frozen moment in time in this diagram. And the solid lines, kind of I'd, I'd ignore the, the dotted lines or the dashed lines are meant to represent the troughs, but the solid lines are the wave fronts that we can think of as the crests. They don't have to be the crests. They could be the troughs. They could be any point that is in continuous phase. So all along this wave front, they have the same phase. And then next to all the previous wave front, they'll have again the same phase, just displaced by two pi radians or, or 360 degrees. So that describes a circular wave front, and sometimes we want to just express our interest in or be curious about what's happening to a particular bit of a wave. That particular bit of the energy of a wave as it spreads out, as it propagates, where is it going? And in that case, we're interested in what we call the rays. So we think of these rays, these rays are sort of artificial constructions showing what happens to the energy, what happens to the propagation of the wave front. And note that the rays are always drawn at right angles to the wave front. We can see that also in this linear propagation. So this could be waves passing down a trough or something like that. But as I've been saying, this could describe more kinds of waves, so these could be light waves. Okay, Imagine them from a light source that's quite distant, and we're just looking at one small section, and so the crests are effectively, the, the, the wave uh, points of the same phase are uh, parallel to each other, and the wave fronts are described by the solid lines, and a wavelength would be the distance between successive wave fronts. And notice still, the rays are always perpendicular to the wave fronts. We can approximate a ray, particularly with light, by using a ray box, by cutting down a light source, or um, using a laser. But those are approximations. They still have an appreciable width, and if we examine them closely, then we would be able to, so to speak, draw the wave fronts still. Now, a man called Christian Huygens, 17th century Dutch uh, physicist, astronomer, one of the pioneers of optics, one of the first people, along with men like uh, Robert Hooke, to use uh, microscopes, um, telescopes, along with Galileo. And he was also a popularizer of the idea of waves and wave fronts, and the idea that light is a wave. 
um, which was a, a, a radical new idea at the time. And he said, well, in order to predict where we're going to draw a wavefront, let's take an existing wavefront and then let's pretend, or let's say it is, I'm sorry, pretending, let's say it is a source of wavelets. And any point, and therefore, in his classical physical view, an infinite number of points along this wave are sources of waves, sources of wavelets. And we can draw that here. So I've drawn, I can't draw an infinity of them, I've drawn an arbitrary number of wave fronts here, wavelets here, each of which has a wavelength from its center point, uh, a radius of one wavelength. Notice how these all join up to sort of form lines here and here, where they constructively add together. If this was the original, if this line was the original source, maybe we're dipping a stick into some water, then the waves would spread out in either directions. But as I've shown by this red line, we're only really interested in wave propagating from left to right. So we can draw a line here, and then that line, that wave front acts as a source of wavelets like this, and we can draw another line, and so on and so forth, showing the propagation of the waves. This is pretty obvious for a linear wave. We can also do it for a circular wave. So the outside wave front there acts as a source of waves. Draw those and then we can draw another circle heading out here. Again, this is pretty trivial for circular waves and linear waves, but as we will see shortly, you can use this to make predictions about where the wave fronts will be in reflection, in refraction, in diffraction and other wave phenomena. OK, so we've looked at wave fronts and rays, and we've sketched and interpreted diagrams involving wave fronts and rays. So, job done there.